Hi everyone, I'm here with my friend Robert Spencer, and who better to discuss what Muslims say when we bring up what Islam teaches about jihad. So, we say, we say that Islam calls for offensive jihad in certain situations, defensive jihad in certain situations, that Islam ultimately calls for the violent subjugation of the world. We say things like that. We say that there are passages of the Quran which, when examined in context, they call for violence against unbelievers just for being unbelievers. We say these kinds of things, and Muslims respond. We they debate say, them, and what do they say? They say that it's all defensive. They, mm -hmm. that the, Yes, the Quran allows for fighting, but it's only when the Muslims are attacked. And that when the non-Muslims sue for peace or lay down their arms, then the Muslims must also lay down their arms mm -hmm. and allow for peace to be established. And that any passages in the Quran that give the impression that offensive jihad is being taught are actually limited in scope only to the 7th century situation of Muhammad and his companions. So... This is what they say. According to them, then, if non-Muslims in an area, in a Muslim-controlled area, uh, especially under the control of Muhammad, if non-Muslims didn't want to fight, didn't want to have any problem with the Muslim community, all they would have to do is live peacefully. And if they live peacefully, then there's not going to be any problem, right? Yes, that's right. According to the standard view of Islamic apologists in the United States, mm -hmm. If such a group were to make clear to the Muslims that they would live in peace with the Muslims, then the Muslims are obligated to live in peace with them. You look, for example, at Surah 60, verses 8 and 9, mm -hmm. where it says that if there is a group that is living in peace with you, then you live in peace with them. And it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, many other, many Islamic exegetes would say that that's by no means the Quran's last word mm -hmm. on Islam and jihad. But as far as Islamic apologists in the West go, mm -hmm. it generally is. Mm -hmm. It's peace if the non-Muslims want peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, imagine our surprise. <laughs> now, there are all kinds of passages we can go to. I'm actually picking this one because I normally don't mention it. Right? Uh, because I, I've got... Nor do I. Yeah, I've, I've got standard verses that I go to that I'm going to keep repeating until they're in everyone's head. So this is like 920, Surah 9 verse 29, Surah 9 verse 73, Surah 9 verse 123, um, Surah 48 verse 29, passages like that that people need to become familiar with. Um, but I don't want to give the impression that those are the only relevant passages. So on this specific issue, there's an interesting uh, passage in Surah 9 of the Quran. Let me read it talking about some people who were pretending to be Muslims. These were people during the time of Muhammad who were pretending to be Muslims because they lived in the Muslim community. They were surrounded by Muslims. And so they pretend to be Muslims because they're scared of Muslims. And if they had a place to run, they would run. But they, there's nowhere for them to run. There's, there's Muslims everywhere. And so they pretend to be Muslims in order to protect themselves. Now, let's go ahead and read the passage just so you don't think I'm making this up. Uh, this is the Haleli Khan version. Chapter 9 of the Quran, verses 56 and 57. Important passage to uh, think about. They swear by Allah that they are truly of you. So they're swearing to be Muslims, right? They're swearing, ah, we're, we're, one, we're, we're, we're one of you, Muslims. They swear by Allah that they are truly of you while they are not of you, but they are a people, hypocrites, who are afraid that you may kill them. Should they find a refuge or caves or a place of concealment, they would turn straightway thereto with a swift rush. Now notice, they swear by Allah that they're of you. They're swearing that they're Muslims, but they're not Muslims. So why are they swearing that they're Muslims if they're not really Muslims? Well, it says there are people who are they're scared of you. They're scared of the Muslims. Well, that's what I don't understand, David. It's a religion of peace. Yeah. Why are they afraid that the Muslims will kill them? Yeah, did they just did they not get the memo? I mean, think about this, right? <laughs> this is the Muslim community that Muhammad is leading. And yes. people somehow got the impression that if they're not Muslims, 
Muhammad's coming to kill them. There must have been Islamophobes in the earliest Muslim community. And that, 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 that's very, very, I mean, that's amazing. So all the way back in the earliest Muslim community, led by Muhammad, there are unbelievers there who are so scared of what Muslims will do to them because, you know, the Muslims might get confused about earlier passages in the same surah, which call for violence against them and against the unbelievers. Muslims might take those passages seriously. So these unbelievers think, oh, no, even though Islam's a religion of peace and tolerance, these Muslims might get the wrong idea about what Islam teaches, and they're going to come and kill us. The only way to protect ourselves is to pretend to be Muslims. And mind you, these are non-Muslims living in the Muslim community in peace. By the word of Islamic apologists in the United States today, they ought to have been able to survive, prosper, and flourish mm -hmm within and among the Muslim community. So, if what Western Muslims say were true, right, the, the, Quran, the response in the Quran should be here, hey, here are people who are pretending to be Muslims because they're scared of you. What's wrong with these people? Go and tell them how peaceful you are and that they're perfectly okay being unbelievers living amongst the Muslims. That's what the Quran would say, but it doesn't say that. It just takes it for granted that people are, are running around pretending to be Muslims because they're terrified of the Muslim community. And David, what does the Quran say at chapter 4, verse 89, about Muslims who join the community, non-Muslims who join the community, become Muslims, and then decide really it's not for them and leave? They wish that you reject faith as they have rejected faith, and thus that you all become equal like one another. So take not awliya, that's uh, sort of friends and so on. But liege lords, protectors, uh, uh, those who take care of you and help you and protect your interests. So take not awliya from them till they emigrate in the way of Allah that to is, Muhammad. To come to join the Muslim community. But if they turn back from Islam, Take hold of them and kill them wherever you find them, and take neither awliya nor helpers from them. So once again, we see that actually those people to whom the Quran refers, who are living among the Muslims and afraid that they will kill them, so they're pretending to be Muslims, have a very good reason to be afraid. Because if they were to announce their unbelief and leave the community, the Muslims have an obligation before Allah to hunt them down and kill them wherever they find them. Yeah, uh, unfortunately for, uh, for these early pretend Muslims, um, they didn't realize something that westernized Muslims realized uh, centuries later, 14 centuries later, namely that Allah really doesn't mean what he says when he's, when he's talking about violence. And uh, Allah has some sort of cosmic Tourette syndrome where he blurts out all these things that he doesn't really mean. And he lost his faculties as time went on. Early on, when he's talking about peace and tolerance, he meant those things. He spoke clearly. But in his old age, apparently, Allah... Uh, seems to have lost his ability to communicate clearly. And Muslims, of course, got the idea that they're supposed to violently subjugate people. Muhammad got that idea. Muhammad said that he'd been commanded to fight people until they say that there's no God but Allah. So even, even Muhammad misunderstood Allah's commands. And the unbelievers, the unbelievers thought that Islam was so violent that they needed to run and hide or pretend to be Muslims, and that was the only way that they could be safe. So um, if we really, if we read the Quran in proper context, and if we understand in the original Arabic what is being said, then we will recognize that chapter 4, verse 89, actually means that when they go out from you, wish them well and buy them a parting gift. That's what Allah really meant, and if he, you know, if, if he had taken his meds, um, Hug them wherever you find them. Too bad he didn't fulfill his, fulfill his prescription. Indeed.